Hello, I am the Dark Master, and welcome back to the history of Mississippi. In the last episode, we discussed the Precambrian Super Eon. Today, we will enter the Phanerozoic Era, starting with the Cambrian period of the Paleozoic. The Cambrian was an alien world. It was strangely familiar. All major phylum evolved at this time, albeit in primitive forms in an event titled the Cambrian Explosion. This name is a bit of a misnomer, however. Firstly, several phylums such as jellyfish, comb jellies, and sponges, such as Koya from the Cambrian, already existed. Secondly, it was not instantaneous. It took a few million years and produced several phylum that are no longer around. One of these strange groups were the Anomalocaridids, the top predators of this world. While at first glance they resemble large shrimp, their heads are completely alien with appendages and a strange circular mouth. The most famous of these animals are, is Anomalocaris himself. He was around a meter long, not exactly terrifying, yet still big for the Cambrian. This group would survive until the Devonian, but were most prominent in the Cambrian. Another group of famous extinct arthropods first evolved and flourished at this time, the Trilobites. The oldest known genus being Lemdadella, from 530 million years ago. The Trilobites would go on to be a massive success that lasted until the end of the Paleozoic, the Permian. In addition to these famous oddities of the arthropod family, there are also others such as the Megacera, named after their great hands, which are, you know, claws, and are considered primitive arachnids even though they resemble clams mixed with shrimp more than, say, actual arthropods arachnids such as spiders. It is said that the further back in time you go, the more similar groups of animals become. This is best exemplified by the following animals. Canadapsis and Maypitea were both basal crustaceans who closely resembled the previous mentioned Megasierra and Sidio, which is another basal ar arachnid. Echinoderms also first evolved during this period. However, the familiar sea urchins and starfish hadn't evolved quite yet. The less familiar crinoids existed but were rare and coexisted with much more alien forms, such as the twisted wire eocrinoids, the cushion shaped edafsteroids, and the football shaped helioplacoids. Worms having evolved before the Cambrian explosion had a head start with diversity and had already evolved to diverse forms such as the mostly immobile Otoya and the active scavenger Canadia. Wawaxia represents a stem alien looking mollusk. Ironically, it coexisted with a much more snail like animal called Hyolith, which are more related to brachiopods than mollusks. Another truly alien life form was Haliogenia, which is believed to be a stem arthropod related closely to velvet worms, such as the extinct species Aeschina, which lived at roughly the same time and has been confirmed to be a velvet worm. However, among all the oddities, the weirdest were Opabina and 
Amisquia, two animals of completely unknown affinity. Opabina superficially resembles the anomalocarids, but with a long, two black nose. But the relationship is inconclusive. Amisquia was even more strange, as it was not an arthropod and is best described as a strange swimming slug, yet is not a mollusk either. Where was our ancestors in this world of madness, you may ask? Well, our ancestry is complicated because it's a mass of three species. These include Hakuinthes, Melocumia, and Pacaea. All were small, meek animals that will go on to inherit the earth, but at the time were one of the lower chains of the food web. Where was Mississippi at this time, you may also ask. It was still underwater from the Precambrian, and while we lack fossils of this period, we know that there was a diverse world filled with life, unlike the Precambrian. The land was still barren, though. The next period would mark the first forays onto land, the Ordovician, which we will explore in the next episode of The History of Mississippi.